It was 2013 and I was, um, my expected delivery date was November 25th of that year. So it was 23 weeks, six days when my water broke. We drove to uh, the hospital and they said, we're gonna have to transport you to a higher level care hospital down in San Diego. In the ambulance, I actually went into like full blown labor like where my body was pushing and I couldn't stop. I was like in total shock mode and basically just having a conversation with God in my head, you know? <laughs> Sharp Mary Birch Hospital for Women and Newborns, it's the largest delivery hospital in California, sixth largest in the country, and we deliver over 9,000 babies a year. And this year we had over 1,500 babies that came down to our NICU for intensive care. At Mary Birch, because of the large clinical volume, we've had an interest in doing clinical research now for over 20 years. The high volume of complicated maternal uh, situations and newborn situations is really part of the background on uh, the development of the Neonatal Research Institute with Dr. Katharia leading that group. When you're doing research you really want to impact the largest number of babies possible. So while the majority of research is being done in university hospitals, we believe that the shift should be moved towards community hospitals where most of the babies are receiving their care. And I think that's what makes places like Sharp Mary Birch an ideal place because you're going to have the greatest impact on the majority of the babies being born. Heidi was transferred here at a roughly 23 weeks of gestation with ruptured membranes. She made it over a little over a month and then went into spontaneous labor. I labored for 18 hours, I think it was. Um, but a few hours before I finally delivered her, Dr. Katheria came in and he introduced himself and he said, you know, I'm starting or doing this research. Dr. Katheria discussed with her the option of uh, doing a resuscitation while, still, uh, while the baby was still attached to the umbilical cord. This was a research protocol that we had developed through the Neonatal Research Institute, and she consented to do it. I delivered the baby and essentially held the baby while Dr. Katheria performed a resuscitation while we were still on the umbilical cord. And because of this technique, she not only was breathing well after birth, but she was able to go down to the ICU without needing a breathing tube initially. And even though she had lots of complications in the NICU, I believe all those stem cells and the other benefits she got with delayed cord clamping allowed her to recover very beautifully and have a great long-term outcome. This case was critical in the development of the Neonatal Research Institute. What we were able to do is go back and get additional funding to obtain the Life Start bed so that there would be a radiant warmer rather than a person having to hold a, hold a baby like Leona in their hands during that time. Our studies have already showed immediate ab impact in that we're now implementing uh, giving all babies cord umbilical cord blood from birth. One of the first studies we did was showing the benefits of squeezing the umbilical cord. This is a technique known as umbilical cord milking, where instead of waiting for the cord um, to give blood to the baby, you quickly squeeze the cord several times, allowing that baby to receive additional cord blood. And we compared this intervention to the technique of waiting, and we showed that squeezing the cord actually had better blood delivery to the baby, which resulted in better cardiac function and less brain bleeding in those infants. And so our next big study is now to show that do these babies who received umbilical cord milking have better neurological outcomes? And we've recently completed that study by looking at two to three year olds and showing that they're neurologically doing better compared to just the technique of keeping the babies connected. And so that's just one example, but there are a number of things we're trying to do early in that first few minutes to an hour of life. Uh, other things such as um, helping the babies open up their lungs more easily by giving them longer breaths. Other things like giving caffeine, a therapy that we give to all premature babies, but now we're giving it within the first hour of birth to help these babies breathe better and have better brain oxygenation. The focus in the NICU, of course, is on that child whose life uh, that we are trying to save and, and to have the, just the very best outcome. Um, but when we look at this more broadly, it's critical that we determine what happens to these children after they leave the NICU. And what we are beginning to develop here at Sharp Mary Birch is a NICU follow-up program. We want to have them be prepared for kindergarten optimally, and we need to identify uh, on an annual basis what therapies might be necessary, whether it's speech and language uh, therapy or occupational therapy, physical therapy, whatever sorts of developmental delays they might have, we want to intervene early. 
This is a unique se setting where neonatologists and perinatologists and obstetricians can all come together to then find out what the best care is, not just for the mother, but for the baby. And there's so much of what we do depends on how great care a mother receives. Well, why not start implementing that after delivery as well? And I think the core blood situation is one of the best examples of how a partnership can lead to such great success. And so I think this sort of collaboration really should be the future of how we do research. Our daughter is doing absolutely amazing. She walks and runs and plays and it's, it's amazing how well she's doing.